Hello and welcome to another training session. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can find out the distance between two postcodes. Now there's two ways of doing this. One is to find the, the distance as a crow flies in a straight line, but that's not as useful as finding out the distance by road. And the example we've got here is different employees' names, their home addresses, and the postcode of the office at which they work. Now what we want to do is we want to put in a new column here which shows their distance to work. Now we need to do this in a couple of ways. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to find a website that will work this out for us. Now here's an example. This is just Google Maps and I've put in a couple of postcodes as an example and what you need to do is once you have these couple of postcodes in and it's showing you the distance then you need to take a look up here and see the actual code for the uh, for the actual address of this website. Now what this will do is it'll let us then extract the data from that website using Power Query in Excel to get data from a website. Now if we have a look at this one here we'll see that this is not going to be suitable because it also not only puts in the postcode, it puts in other parts of the address and also a longitude and latitude values. So we cannot work that out automatically from our list here because all we have is the postcodes. So we need to find another website that will let us do that. Now here's another example of a website and this one does give me distances from a postcode to a postcode but the web address for this one is a PHP. Now PHP is a server script language and what that does is it works out everything and it sends information from this form to itself and it works out the distance and it then pastes it back in here. But without me doing something to send that information, I can't do that from extracting the data just simply from a web page. I would need to get into their server to do it. Now, as an alternative, here is a website and it's actually you'll notice it's another page on that same website there driving distances and this is driving distances between calculator now this is also PHP but it's actually got the send request from the web page to the PHP which then lets me get from postcode to postcode now once we have this what we need to do is we need to take a close look at exactly how this address is written. So what we have here for the first postcode is we have the first part of the postcode and then a plus sign and then the second part of the postcode. And then here we have the first part of the postcode and the plus and the second part and that's for the to address. Now that's going to be important because what we need to do within our Power Query is convert this postcode here to exactly what we saw there. So we'd need to concatenate this by replacing, or not concatenate, but replace the space with a plus sign in this postcode. But in our end result, we don't want that showing with the plus, so then before we finish our query, we'd need to take that out again. Now also, we don't want to just do this for the one of them, we want to do it for each of the postcodes. Now the example that I was given for this, or asked to do, actually had over a thousand employees and various different postcodes across the country for their offices, and of course everyone had a unique home postcode. To run this it took a couple of minutes to run because it had to go through effectively a thousand different accesses of that website. Um, and you'll see how long it takes to do just these eight here. Um, it may not be the best solution for you, but once I've done it, these postcodes are not going to change frequently. So what I would do is I would simply copy and paste the values of the returned answer back into this original file and delete the query. So let's have a look at how we do it. Well, the first thing to do is to actually create a new query that looks at that website that we found. So I'm simply going to select this address here and copy it because that's the one that I want to do my query on. So back over here I'm just going to say data 
get data from web and I'm going to start building a query as if I'm just looking at the very first one. So that's all I'm going to do. So it's a basic web query. I paste in the web address and click OK. What we're now going to do is we're going to see it's going to give me an example of the data on that website and I'm going to go through the various different things until I find the table which actually has the results I want. Now this is another example where we need to do some manipulation in Power Query because actually this here is transposed from what we actually want. So we'll change it. So I'm going to go into the transform data. And I'm now just going to go through. I'm going to delete that step there. I don't want to change the type. The source is the web address that we pointed to. The navigation is saying which of the tables on there we wanted. And now what I'm going to do is transpose the column. So transpose the data basically. So I'm going to select both columns and I'm going to go into my transform and transpose the data. Now I also want to eliminate some of these uh, columns. Now because I want to do this on multiple rows of data, what I don't want to do is promote headers. What I actually want to do is remove that row completely. So I'm going to go to my uh, home ribbon and I'm going to say remove rows and remove the top row. It's going to ask me how many rows. I just say the top one row. And now I'm going to rename the columns. So this column one, I'm going to put in there from my column two. I'm going to call it two, T-O. Now, what we have here is we have various different distances. So this is as the crow flies kilometers, as the crow flies miles. And then we have road distance uh, kilometers and road distance in miles. Now, I just want the road distance in miles. So I'm going to select these other three columns and remove those columns. So all I'm left with is my from to and my distance in miles. OK, so the next step is to take this query that we have so far and turn it into a function. Now, the function that we need to do, we need to actually do some work on these as well. So we'll do that in our second query. But remember that we need to have the pluses in between there. So I'm going to just turn this one into a function first of all. Now the way we do that is in the advanced editor, I go to my advanced editor and immediately before let, I'm going to say, uh, let's just press enter and let's tell the computer this is a function. if I do it right. So we need to basically make a little right arrow like that. Now in the function, I need two things. I need my start address, which is there, and I need my finish address, which is there. Now these are the ones that have the pluses in them. So in my other query that gets me a list of all those things, I need to remember to have changed them into having included the plus before I put them in. Now I'm going to put them in as variables and I'm just going to call it start, comma, end. So there I have my two variables and now over here where I refer to them I'm simply going to take that, delete it and I'm going to put in the speech marks and then the ampersand. This is going to be start and now I do ampersand speech marks again. Now this is basically where I'm concatenating together the web address to include whatever variable there is for start and then also my end. So if I take that one out there, 
and put in concatenated together with end. This will now give me a valid function. As soon as I click done, what it's going to do is it invokes that function, asks me, OK, what value do I want for start? What value do I want for end? Now, we're going to create another query that returns the entire list of values for my start and end. So I don't want to invoke this one yet. All I'm going to do is close and load. Now, with that function, it's simply loaded as a function, so it doesn't load it onto the page anywhere. I'm now going to take this table here and use this along with my function um, to actually return a distance value for each of these here. So let's have a look at how we do that. First thing I'm going to do, right click, get data from table or range. This will create a new query, querying the table that I had on the page there. This is what it returns. And again, I'm going to take out that changed type. I'm going to put it back in in a minute. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember we need to actually go through both of these because at the moment they're not what we want. We need them with the plus. So I'm going to do a replace values. And the value I want to replace is a space and I want to replace the space with a plus. Now this will only work if we have a space in the correct place and we don't have spaces on the ends. If we do have spaces on the ends, we need to use the trim tool to get rid of the spaces at the end. And if we don't have the space in between, we need to do some um, other uh, manipulation or cleaning to make sure that we do have these in the correct format that's gonna be recognized by our website. Okay, now what we've got to do is we've got to invoke a custom function. So we're going to add a new column, which is invoking a custom function. The custom function is going to be the one that we just had, and we're going to call this distance. Now, this is not strictly a single column because it's going to return a table of values, and from there we're going to extract what it is we want. Now the function we're going to use is still called table1 because we didn't rename it and we're going to get the value from home postcode and office postcode. These are going to be our start and end postcodes. So I click OK. It's now going to say data privacy. That's fine. I'm just going to say continue and the reason it does this is because it's going to an external website and I'm simply going to say ignore privacy levels. Now what this is warning me about is I'm going to send from my file to an external location all of the postcodes because the calculation is being done externally. So do be careful if this has secret information that you're sending or confidential information. However, postcodes are not necessarily uh, uh, secret. I'm going to click Save. That has now set the privacy for this query. And next time I run the query or refresh the query, it will just use those privacy settings that I've applied. What we now do is we get a table of values returned for each instance. And you can see here that these are the table values that I get. Now, because I've got those table values and the table values contain the postcode without the plus, what I can do now is just simply delete those two columns. So I'm going to say remove, and I'm going to remove those two columns, and now expand out the table. I don't want to use the original column name as a prefix, and I click OK. This is now going to give me three new columns from two and miles. Now, what I could do is I could change this here into home, and this here into work. And that is all we need to do. What we may want to do here is change these into correct data types. So for example here, the number of miles, this is a decimal number. And I could do the same for the others just to make sure they're all text. Now if I've got multiples that I need to do at the same time, I can select them all together and I can turn it into text and they will all turn into text at the same time.
Now this is the answer that I want, so I'm simply going to say close and load to. I'm going to put it into a table on an existing worksheet. I'm simply going to put it on the side so that we can see this, and I'm not going to add it to the data model. However, you probably would want to do that. And in fact, let's put it one more to the side. And the reason it came up with that error was because I clicked in two different cells. So it went to two different locations. What I need to do is just click it once, and now it will work. So external data, getting data. Now what it's doing here is it's actually going through and querying the website separately for each one of them. And that's why when I mentioned that it would take a while to do on a large data set, um, you might want to let it run and go away and get a coffee while you're doing it. But you can see here that we now have home postcode, work postcode, and the number of miles between those two postcodes. And of course this is refreshable, so I could add an extra person in here, a new postcode, or I could change somebody's postcode and refresh it, and it will update this list here. However, as I said, if you have a large data set, for example, a thousand or more, because of the length of time it takes to do the query, what you might want to do is do it once and then copy these values. So if I simply copy and then paste in the values into there, this now has a hard-coded copy of those miles for what they were at a certain point in time. I can now go ahead and delete my query as I no longer need it. Um, and that has given me the distance in miles from one postcode to another. Now that works fine for the UK. Um, a couple of things you do have to do. You have to find the web address that lets you include the postcode in that web address. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So difficult to do with Google. There are ways of doing it using an API, but this is showing you the Power Query method. Um, difficult to do on some websites, but if you do take the time to look around, you may well find one that does include the actual postcode from and to in the web address. Now, the other thing to do is you can do this for different countries. So if we were to go on to here and say distance calculators, you'll find uh, road mileage calculator, distance between US cities. So the road mileage one does it for US cities as well. So here you can put in zip codes. And if we put in, uh, let's just try putting in the same one and calculate the route. It now shows the route between those two different uh, zip codes. But what it doesn't do is show me the distance. So what we might want to do is go to that one or go to a different uh, place within this website to find, for example, the US route planner or the US distance calculator and type in the zip codes to actually find out the distance between them. But you do need to find the website that contains the actual postcode within the PHP. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I can think of many, many applications for this. Uh, if you did find it useful, don't forget to click like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you for listening.